You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Med Zone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 50 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. We're encroaching our one year anniversary. I am your co-host Luke Millette and here's your host Jim Chester. Hey guys, so today we had an opportunity to interview Peter Goldman, and if you guys want to learn more about the zone healing technique, uh, stay tuned for this amazing episode. So what's your chiropractic story and what influenced you to become a chiropractor? Well, basically, um, I'm born and raised in New York City, and when I was a kid, my parents were, I grew up in a household that was very naturally oriented, so we didn't even really go to an MD. Um, our main doctor was basically a chiropractor. So ever since I was a kid, I just would get adjusted for anything and everything. And I was quite athletic. So, you know, being involved in kind of sports that were rough at times, I would get banged up and just get adjusted. And then I started realizing that, you know, getting adjusted by the proper chiropractor could help with pretty much anything. So I was lucky enough to be adjusted by this amazing chiropractor who was basically a living healing legend in New York City when I was growing up. He practiced for like, I think almost 50 years and um, I was incredibly inspired by what he did. I'd say by the time I was about 16 years old, I just figured chiropractic could fix anything. I mean, that's the way, you know, I was looking at it from a 16 year old mind, but what I saw this guy do with other people also that I knew was just incredible. So. I was always a huge, huge, huge fan of chiropractic. I didn't think I would be a chiropractor because I had other interests. But um, at some point, I decided, hey, I'm going to do it too. And that's, uh, that's, how I, that's what led me to become a chiropractor. So what would you say makes you unique in the chiropractic world? What are you doing differently to kind of separate yourself from everyone else? Okay, that's that's the easiest question I've heard. I can answer that easily. If you go into 99% of chiropractors' offices these days in 2018, I would say 95% plus percent of their patients are there for neck and back pain. Have a musculoskeletal type practice. And it doesn't mean that they're not principled, they don't have a good philosophy, they don't understand subluxation. It doesn't mean they're not awesome. But for whatever the reason, if you go into most chiropractors' waiting rooms and there's 20 people waiting and you ask everyone, hey, what are you here for? What are you here for? What brings you here? Almost every one of them is going to tell you neck and back pain. Well, in my office, 80% of the people who come to me are coming for not neck and back pain. So I'm not talking about, I'm not even talking about someone who comes for neck pain and then I adjust them and I tell them the chiropractic story and then they realize it's for wellness and all this stuff. Yeah, that's fine. That happens once in a while. I'm talking about first visit on the entrance form, they're writing, they're here for their thyroid, they're there for their liver, they're there for the reproductive organs, they're there for their immune system, they're there for um, a certain gland in their body, they're there for their blood sugar, they're there for their blood pressure. So, um, you know, and I have some, I have some musculoskeletal people that come in, I take care of a lot of pro athletes, and these guys get banged up, you know, their necks and backs get jacked up, but most of my practice is old school D.D. Palmer style. If you look at D.D. Palmer's book, The Chiropractor's Adjuster, which he wrote in 1910, 15 years after he discovered chiropractic, man, you look at that book, he was hardly talking about neck and back pain. He was talking about chiropractic helping pretty much anything, and that's what I do. And as far as coming full circle to the question, to be you know super specific about what sets me apart, you know, you have, I'd say you have the chiropractors that, you know, are happily just neck and back pain doctors. Then you have the chiropractors who have a great philosophy and, you know, they talk a good game, but again, still go in their office. Almost everyone's there for neck and back pain. And like I said, in my office, almost no one's there for neck and back pain. So uh, that's an easy question. That's a pretty good answer. I hope uh, more clinics could kind of gear towards that in the future. I'm with you. So... We have a bit of a surprise question here. It's not on the list. 
We're thinking of making this a normal question that we ask everyone, but we thought we'd try it out on you first if you're game. I'm ready. So, as a chiropractor, what had more impact on your profession? Receiving your first adjustment or giving your first adjustment? I just want to, it's a great question, I just want to clarify. You're saying when I, you know, walked into my office to work the very first day of my career, was what motivated me more my very first adjustment I received or maybe the first one I gave in school? Is that the question? Um, I guess the first adjustment you've given, like in school possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, just to clarify, and well, just say the question one more time about the first adjustment I gave in school. What was the question? Just say it one more time. Which had more impact on your life, giving oh, one okay, or got receiving it, got one? It, got it, got it, okay. I understand. Okay. Um, you know, to me, not to sound too metaphysical, but it almost feels like one event. You know, me receiving that first adjustment as a little kid and me giving that first adjustment, it kind of feels like the same thing. The detail is in like me receiving it or me giving it, but kind of vibrationally, it feels like the same event. Like I said, I don't want to get too metaphysical on everybody, but that's what comes to my mind. That's a pretty good answer. I'll take it. Okay, cool. So, do you have any mantras or quotes that stick out in your mind? Like, are there any famous yeah, quotes that I you do. love? Well, it's my own quote. It's results. My own, my mantra is results. All I care about is results. Because if you, uh, when you're a student in chiropractic school, you have the argument between the straights and the mixers, the hard adjusters, the soft adjusters, the chiropractors who use leg checks, the chiropractors who say leg checks are garbage, the chiropractors who x-ray, the chiropractors who don't x-ray, and the, and this philosophy and that philosophy and using the word subluxation with patients and not using the word, and the argument goes on and on. The arguments are kind of endless. I mean, I remember being a student and watching Don Harrison speak at my school, the founder of CBP, and he was just making fun of Gonset. He was mocking the Gonset technique. He was mocking upper cervical. And I remember some of the upper cervical doctors who spoke would just kind of like almost mock people who went below C2 with their adjustments. And, you know, I remember a lot of people making fun of network because they said, man, they're not even adjusting anything. I remember a lot of the network doctors kind of looking down on other doctors because they weren't preparing the meninges right with their adjustments. But to me, it's all nonsense. I'm a results guy. Results, that's it. That's my mantra. When I say results, I mean the patient walks in the office and says, hey, I've had migraine headaches seven days a week for the last 10 years. I've been to two other chiropractors, I've been to an acupuncturist, I've been to a homeopath, I've been to a medical doctor, I still have headaches. Can you fix them? I'm like, yeah, I can, let's go to work. So maybe that's not the terminology I use, and I want to offend any super principled chiropractors you know, to say it that way. Of course, we know the power that made the body heals the body, and I'm not healing or fixing anything, but the bottom line is, it's about results. And when people come to me with these so-called hard-to-heal situations, the only thing I'm looking for is to see them heal. So healing results is all I ta- is all I care about, and all the arguments within chiropractic are meaningless to me. So what would we be able to accomplish if more people knew about what you were doing and and uh, like the kind of style that you have in your practice, where people don't just come for pain? Well, it's a great question, and I think um, first let me say that. Um, I just use my hands and a flat bench, and my adjustment is two to three minutes. So it's not like I'm in there, you know, sticking acupuncture needles in people or doing muscle tests with vitamins and giving them herbs and all this stuff. Nothing against that. That's all great if that's what you do. But it's just me, my hands, flat bench, and the patient, and we're accomplishing these results. Um, you know, what what we'd accomplish if people would kind of learn from, learn from me and, and let me, you know, show them kind of, the technique I do, and more important than than the technique, because the technique doesn't mean much, but the principles of healing that I understand, then we'd have a profession, most likely, where the average person would say, yeah, you know, my digestion is horrible. Let me me go to a chiropractor to fix my digestion up. Nowadays, most people either don't want to go to a chiropractor in the general public, or they'll go for neck and back pain. But how many people have irregular heartbeats or... Uh, severe digestive disorders or blood sugar situations or gynecological problems and the first thought is hey let me go get a, let me let me go to a chiropractor to get this resolved 
that's what my patients come to me for, but that's almost unheard of in the chiropractic world. So I think if more people did this and the word spread about the results that are possible with, you know, authentic chiropractic, I think uh, more, more, more of the public would be aware of that. I'm, I'm going to say one last one. just want to add one more thing. Even though I said, like, you know, I don't use, like, you know, muscle testing and herbs and vitamins and all this. I'm not against that. I said before, and I'll reiterate, I'm under results. So if there's a chiropractor who practices completely different than me, but they get great results, you know, I tip my hat to them. So that I'm not, I'm not so much into, um, I'm not too concerned about what someone's philosophy or their technique is. I'm more, I'm more down with the results they get. Yeah, when I was a kid, I didn't even know what a chiropractor was. And now that I am aware, I I always go to that first to see, you know, oh, maybe they can help my digestion or maybe they can, you know, help me take care of these headaches. So I hope, you know, in the future, everyone goes to a chiropractic first. You know what I mean? I Listen, my attitude is if, if a person is breathing and they're not bleeding, come in. You know, I don't give stitches. So if you're bleeding, you know, I don't do that. But if you're breathing, if you're alive and you're not bleeding – come to my office. That's pretty cool philosophy. I like that a lot. Never heard that before. I always yeah, that's, tell that's, people... That, all, all, my, all my secretaries know that. So the patient calls, hey, can Dr. Pete help with so-and-so? They go, hey, if you're breathing and not bleeding, come on in. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like to say that you need two doctors in your life, one to keep you alive and one to save you from dying. And the nice. one that keeps people alive is the chiropractor, and the one that saves people from dying is the other type where you go in for emergencies. I like that. Yeah, it just makes sense, you know. And being around the block a few times, I picked up a little, you know, philosophy from different, you know, trains of thought and different paths of care. You know, I got my uh, my roots in CBP. You know, I started out as a traction technician working in a CBP office, and I was a traction tech for five and a half years doing the CBP style and grew up in Palmer at Palmer in Davenport, Iowa and uh, started out under care when I was 16. I'll be 40 in October, but I had a chance to understand the Palmer uh, plan and, you know, the Palmer method. And I thought all chiropractors practice Palmer style, dude. Yeah. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's funny because when I got to chiropractic school, when I first I had an interesting story with it's kind of similar to that, which was um, you know I grew up with this amazing chiropractor, and then I when I got to chiropractic school, I thought that's just what chiropractic was because I was unfamiliar with any other kind of chiropractic. It's true. When I got to school, I, I was like, man, what is this stuff, you know? And um, you know, I had some cool things happen after that, but um, that was my first impression, kind of like like yourself when you kind of thought it was one way, you didn't even realize that there was different ways to do it. No, I, I was like. People adjust with instruments? What is that? Right. I was like, you guys don't x-ray? That's freaking weird. Right. I'm like, that's like the weirdest type of chiropractic you ever heard. You guys don't x-ray and you adjust with instruments? Totally. And then uh, from my point of view, I went to help Jim at his clinic do some video work. And, you know, they've got like these racks and pulley systems everywhere. And so that's what I thought chiropractic was. Right. And then I go to another clinic. I'm like, well, where's all the pulley systems? How come no one's hanging around? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me about this influencer. You had uh, this Thurman Fleet. I know that he's kind of yeah. a legend in the chiropractic world. I honestly don't know much about him. So if you could share some, some of your insights about uh, Dr. Fleet, that'd be awesome. I'd be happy to. So a couple things. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is Dr. Thurman Fleet um, was a chiropractor who practiced in the 30s, 40s, 50s, etc. in San Antonio, Texas. Now, I wouldn't say I'm a chiropractic historian, but I've been around the block and I've checked some stuff out as far as results, DD, BJ, Gonstead, Thompson, etc., etc., etc. I have not come across a chiropractor yet who got the same results as Dr. Fleet. Now, you know, I may be wrong. There may be some out there I haven't discovered, but... If you research Dr. Thurman Fleet, it's actually a website, drthurmanfleet.com, drthurmanfleet.com. has a little, little kind of bio on him. But anyway, this guy, Dr. Fleet, the when he was open for business, the police in San Antonio had to reroute traffic patterns in order to accommodate the people coming to his office. That's ridiculous. I mean, it wasn't like he was having a special event. He was just like, oh, today I'm open from whatever. And the police in San Antonio were rerouting traffic patterns in order to accommodate the people going to his office. That's number one. Number two, he had to move his office three times to conform with fire codes because he had so many people in his waiting room 
that he was actually breaking fire codes for too many people in a room. He had to move three times. So he was a spectacular healer. I think one of the, even outside chiropractic, one of the greatest healers in the last 500 years that I've researched. So long story short, um, he created a technique that he called zone therapy. Um, I learned zone therapy back in 1993 when I started chiropractic school. And I refined it over the years, and I call it the zone technique. And anyone can go to my website, sfgoldman.com, and learn a little bit about that. But I'll get more, I'll get more to that later. Um, in the meantime, so um, the doctor who was adjusting me in, in New York City since I was a little kid was a direct student of Dr. Fleet, so I kind of grew up with that. But anyway, so here's kind of a cool story. So if I get to chiropractic school, as I alluded to before, and I show up, and... When I get there, as I mentioned, I was a little like, wow, this is a little different than I'm used to because you know, people are talking a good game, but it's really neck and back pain over here. And I came from this chiropractor who was a student of fleet who was helping anything and everything outside of, like I said, bleeding or a burst appendix or like you mentioned, emergency medicine. So I call my chiropractor back in Brooklyn and I'm like, hey, I'm like, hey what? I don't know what's going on, but I, I've been in school for a few weeks and I, this is not what I expected. He goes, look. He goes, there's a, and I went, to, I went to Life East in Atlanta, the Atlanta area. He goes, look, Pete, he goes, there's a chiropractor. He's not affiliated with your school, but he's in the Atlanta area. He's like 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. He was a student of Dr. Fleet. He's been practicing for 40 years. Give him a call. Maybe you can visit him. So call him up. His wife answers. And um, his wife answers the phone. And I'm like, hey, can I can I meet you know the doc? And she's like, well, you know, he's, he's kind of semi-retired, but he works out of the house. So you, you can come on Sunday and chat with him. So I drive out there Sunday, and um, you know, he was kind of like a, I don't know, just he was probably about 80 years old and pretty soft-spoken guy with a southern accent, you know, from Atlanta area. And um, I knew he studied with Dr. Fleet, and he says to me, he's like, hey. Do you want to know the secret behind all healing? Do you want to know why healing works when it works and why healing doesn't work when it doesn't work? And I'm like, yeah. So he sits down and he starts explaining stuff to me for like two hours. And I don't think I understood a word he said. It was just way over my head. But I knew I was in the midst of a healing master. I knew that for sure. I just couldn't put together what he was talking about because I just didn't have the brain cells to receive what he was saying. It was so deep. And I knew this guy was fixing for people were coming to him for like epilepsy and diabetes and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, man, I want to I want to do what this guy does. But, you know, a, I don't understand what he's talking about. And B, you know, he seems like I don't know if I'll ever see him again. This just seems like a nice little Sunday visit at the beginning of my four years of school. So then he says to me, hey, you want to get adjusted? And I remember he gave me like an amazing adjustment and I had pretty high standards because my chiropractor in New York, like I said, it was incredible. And he kind of looked almost like a frail old man to me. And I was like, how's this guy going to give me a powerful adjustment? But his adjustment was so freaking good. And I remember when he did my cervicals, <clears throat> it was like lightning. He gave me one of the best neck adjustments I've ever got. And it was like lightning, but it was smooth and it felt great. And I'm thinking, how did this little old man generate that power and speed and keep it so smooth so I asked him a question and again he gave me this crazy metaphysical answer I didn't know what he was talking about I said hey doc I go that was a really incredible neck adjustment like how did you do that now keep in mind I'm like in prereqs and I only I, I was like I was like three weeks into prereqs I didn't know anything and he's like well he's like you know in chiropractic, we talk about innate intelligence. We talk about universal intelligence. And universal intelligence is everywhere. So it's passing through me too. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, if I put all the pressure on myself to give a great neck adjustment, that would just be like me and you. But if I realize that universal intelligence is everywhere, then it must be within me and I'm within it. So that's universal intelligence giving you that neck adjustment. And I'm thinking like, man, what the hell is this guy talking about? But um, anyway, it was way over my head but I, I liked him you know and uh, I remember thinking well this was a nice way to start my four years of school I'll probably never see this guy again but kind of a cool experience first he explained healing to me for two hours then he gave me a spectacular adjustment and then he totally confused me with some explanation of his adjustment and um, as I was walking out of his office or how, you know, home office that Sunday he kind of patted me on the shoulder he's like hey come back next Sunday 
So I basically went there every Sunday for four years straight. And uh, I mean, I went to school to get my degree, but I learned about healing from him. And he taught me Dr. Fleet zone therapy, the technique. And he also taught me the principles of healing from Dr. Fleet. And what was the craziest part of the story, because no one at my school really knew this, because this, this technique and this type of healing was not taught in school or any school, the word kind of got out. And by the time I was in eighth quarter, ninth quarter, I was adjusting half of the faculty, which is kind of unheard of because students don't, don't adjust doctors. And I had half the freaking doctors coming to me to get adjusted. So um, it was a pretty, uh, pretty fun time. So tell me a little bit deeper. Let's, let's go a different layer down. Tell me about this zone technique. Okay, so let me first start by saying that the technique itself really doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, people who think it's gone set or CBP or even the zone technique or upper cervical, they, they are kind of missing the point. Um, because if you understand the principles of healing, the technique really means very, 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 very little. But with that said, as a context and as a preface, I will say that the zone technique is my favorite technique. Um, again, Dr. Fleet invented zone therapy. I've had a lot of influences over the years, and I kind of put the foundation of Dr. Fleet's zone therapy with my own stuff, and I named it zone technique. The zone technique is an amazingly effective way to understand what's happening in the body and then to balance the body. But like I said, the principles of healing is really where it's at. But since we're talking about the technique, I'll, I'll go into it a little deeper. There are six points in the back of the head on the superior nuchal line, the occipital fibers. Don't be confused with SOT. SOT has occipital fibers too, but SOT has seven points across and three levels. That's 21 points. This has nothing to do with it. This is six points across, which tell you much different things than the SOT tells you. So the six points across relate to six brain centers. And the brain centers are the glandular brain center, the eliminative nerve, digestive, muscular, and circulatory, six brain centers. Now, when you feel the back of someone's head, it will, it will tell me, you know, when I feel the back of someone's head or someone who knows how to do this, it will tell me or them what's happening in the brain center that controls either the glandular, eliminative, nerve, digestive, muscular, or circulatory center system. Sorry. Then what I would do is I would, there's, there's six sets of four points in the spinal cord that relate to those six brain centers. So for example, if I find the brain center that controls the digestive organs is not in harmony with the digestive organs, I will stimulate four specific points in the spinal cord you know, with a chiropractic thrust. And that will send energy up the cord and reset that part of the brain. Now, by the way, I'm just gonna pause right here. Let's say there's a chiropractor out there listening saying, wait a second, I never even heard of this. You mean to tell me you're gonna feel the back of the head, know what's happening in the brain, and then stimulate the cord and heal the brain? A, I didn't learn about that in school, and B, I never heard of that. And C, the neurology I remember doesn't you know, coincide with that. Well, I'll pause for a second and go back to what I said at the beginning. It's results, I mean, listen, I have people flying in to see me from maybe 15 to 20 different countries. I don't know a chiropractor that has that. I don't know a medical doctor that has that. I have people flying in to see me. I don't think two weeks goes by without someone emailing the office and saying, hey, um, I have this situation, no one can fix it. I live in Malaysia or Japan or Europe or New York or Chicago or Hawaii. We want to fly into SF, you know, San Francisco where I am for a week, uh, for a week of uh, adjustments. So something must be going on here if I, week, you know, month in and month out have people flying in to see me. Um, not to mention, like I said, um, 80% of my patients are coming for non-neck and back pain. So I just wanted to throw that in in case anyone started getting a little crazy about what I'm saying. But back to, back to the technique. Once you stimulate the points in the spinal cord, it resets the brain. The brain is in harmony with the body and the body can heal. So that's the quick lowdown on the zone technique on the physical level. There's definitely things way beyond the physical. And you know, D.D. Palmer, founder of chiropractic, he was talking about chiropractic coordinating body, mind, soul. So for me to say it goes beyond the physical, it's, you know, that's chiropractic 101 because no one really knows more about chiropractic than D.D. Palmer. He founded it, he created it, he invented it, he named it, he defined it. So whatever D.D. Palmer said about chiropractic, that's right. And he did say that chiropractic is to balance the body, mind, soul. So it's right in Chiropractic's Adjuster if you want to check it out. 
I think that's really cool that you have such a depth on what you do and why you do it. And, you know, I think that also reading your bio and learning a little bit more about you, that you uh, help athletes and that you have a background in uh, martial arts. I think it's uh, really interesting to, to see that you have the ability to help all walks of life. And I think the reason, just from my interpretation, that you've got to where you are is from discipline. I think discipline's huge. I, first of all, thank you for saying that. It's nice of you, and I appreciate it. And um, I agree with the discipline. It's it's a big part of it. There's some other cool ingredients. And yeah, I've been a martial artist, you know, most of my life, and I'm pretty seriously into it now. Um, if anyone out there knows what Kyokushin Karate is, it's uh, you can look it up. Kyokushin Karate. It's uh, it's pretty hardcore, and I used to fight around the world in that style of karate back in the day. And I'm also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so you know some other stuff too in the martial arts world. So I'm a, I'm a I'm a constant um, I'd say fighter and student uh, in the martial arts context. Um, and I do take care of a lot of pro athletes. Some are pro fighters, some are NFL players, some are NHL players. I'm really good with concussions. People who have concussions, you know, I can often turn what would have been, you know, 10 months of symptoms into two weeks um, by resetting things the way I do. And um, any any MMA fans out there have heard of BJ Penn, and if you haven't, you can look him up. BJ Penn at one point was considered the greatest pound for pound MMA fighter in the world. Um, I met him in 2004. Um, he had several herniated discs in his neck and he was supposed to, well, he was told to, he was in pain 24 seven. He was told to retire and or get, well, not and or, but he was told to retire and get neck surgery. He had tried acupuncture, other chiropractic, all kinds of stuff. And in six visits, we had his neck hundred percent. And by the way, BJ Penn's had his ups and downs in his career since 2004, but you never heard about his neck again. And, you know, he's still one of my very close friends. I've been adjusting him over the years. I see him pretty often. And, um, that's uh, just an example of a, of a you know famous fighter. And here's another one, Justin Tuck, you know, very prominent NFL player who just retired recently. When I met Justin Tuck when he played for the Oakland Raiders, he told me, uh, he's like, Pete, he's like, I get stingers all the time. I'm like, how often? He's like, I get stingers every game and every practice. And then I said, all right, well, let's put that to bed. And we worked on him for the season. And at the end of the season, I'm like, Justin, how many stingers did you get this year? He said, zero. So yeah, you know, I still do musculoskeletal. I'm, I'm really good. I'm really good at cervical discs. I have a lot of people fly into me for cervical disc problems, where they're told for sure they need neck surgery, and they fly in and you know they don't get neck surgery. Here's a kind of a cool story. This one guy, he's actually Canadian, but he lives in Malaysia. He's a Canadian guy who has a business in Malaysia. He was a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is kind of like middle of the road, is the belts there. And he hurt his neck really badly, and he went to a you know doctor in Malaysia, and they're like, man, you need neck surgery, and you cannot do jiu-jitsu anymore. But he didn't want to accept that, so he kept going to doctor to doctor for a second opinion, and everyone's like, man, you got to stop jiu-jitsu, and you got to get neck surgery. He went to four total. He heard about me, called me from Malaysia, we got on the phone, I'm like, come to SF. You know, these people coming to SF, it's not like they're coming to SF for something else and then they're coming to see me. They're coming to SF for no other reason than to get, you know, adjustments from me. So he was one of them. He came, I think he came for eight or nine days. I saw him eight or nine days in a row. And, you know, he, he's, that's a few years ago. He's back in jiu-jitsu. He got his black belt, trains all the time, never got surgery. So, yeah, I'm really good with, with cervical discs. That seems to be something I have a knack for. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This episode is brought to you by Close for Cairo, Cairo Sushi, Dr. Barbara Eaton's 56 Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, Dr. Alok Trivedi, The Black Diamond Club, Element Mattresses, Legacy Wealth Management, Posture Screen, Med Zone, Vantage Point Marketing, Movo University, Vita Chiropractic, The Universal Tractioning System, Imaging Services, Ignite Marketing, and Zingit Solutions. Let's hustle. So this is a little off script, but have you found that your adjusting style and your certainty and your d delivery of the adjustment has helped your business grow? I think so. I mean, you know, if you saw me adjust, you'd be like, man, it's kind of basic. Like I'm a pretty, you know, like, I mean, I'm a good adjuster because I don't know, I'm fast and strong and all that stuff, which I guess makes you a good adjuster if you know what you're doing. But it's got very little to do with that. You know, my style of adjusting is pretty basic. Like I'll do like a double CNR, double transverse in the thoracics. 
I do side posture stuff. I do most of my cervical seated, like rotary breaks, you know. So, but yeah, it's the, it's basically um, expectation and healing is very powerful vibration. And when a patient's sitting in front of me, you know, unless they're bleeding or have a burst appendix, which in which case I tell them to call 911, and they're explaining to me, you know, they have an immune, an autoimmune problem, or they're always tired, or they, or they have a, you know, blood sugar problem, or a blood pressure problem, or as they're talking, I already know they're going to get better. <laughs> and that vibration is very strong, and I'm kind of matter of fact about it. I don't make it like it's a big deal, but my expectation and healing creates a very powerful vibration. And again, the results speak for themselves. So where do you personally see the chiropractic profession in about 20 years? Well, the answer is, I'll just start by saying, I don't know. I mean, I'm not psychic. I don't know. It's been going in a horrible direction for a long time. I bet you, well, for, okay, I bet you from 1895 to around 1930, 1940, I bet you 98% of chiropractors were awesome. It was just a great profession back then. Um, you know, D.D. Palmer, when he had his first school, for those who don't know, this is what happened. So first D.D. Palmer invents chiropractic, then he doesn't want to tell anyone, doesn't want to show anyone, but then he gets decides to do it. So, I don't know, 1897 or whatever, he opens the first school, Palmer Chiropractic, and he basically, he didn't have a lot of books on anatomy and physiology and neurology and all that stuff. He would just, you know, he had some medical doctors, some osteopaths, I think just some lay people, and they would sit in a circle around him and he would just lecture on the, the big idea, the principle of chiropractic. And, they, you know, he'd lecture on the big idea. And when someone felt that they got it, they would just stand up and say, I've got the big idea. And he would give them their papers and graduate them then and there. It might take a week, it might take a year. But he'd let them decide when they were ready. And when they got the big idea, he'd give them their graduation papers and he'd send them out. And these guys were fixing freaking tumors and epilepsy and diabetes and all this crazy stuff. The chiropractors wouldn't even know where to start with today, most chiropractors. Um, and um, that was the history of chiropractic. And by the way, um, Didi Palmer said that these first group of chiropractors, like the late 18, 1890, you know, the late 1890s, if they had a patient come in with a hardcore problem and it took them more than five visits to fix them 100%, they'd go back to Didi Palmer for a refresher course and be like, man, what am I doing wrong? That's how powerful chiropractic was then. Now, 2018, my God, it's like I'm embarrassed by the profession. Um, I know there's a lot of great, you know, ones out there like you guys, and even having this kind of show and and getting, you know, chiropractors enthused and proud of themselves and 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 uh, maybe back to some of the principles. But in general, the profession's kind of in shambles right now. Um, if you compare it to what I just gave the late 1890s, so um, where is it going to be in the time frame you mentioned? Man, I hope it goes. I hope I hope it comes full circle, and I hope it goes back to like the 1890s, where you know chiropractors were ready to you know step up and help anyone with anything. So we're going to jump forward a little bit to an idea that I think most chiropractors either embrace or they uh, push away, and that's marketing. And uh, what, what kind of key marketing strategies do you do to uh, help your practice grow? It's a good question. And I'm going to say this, and, and I'm going to, I want to just preface what I'm saying. Just because I'm going to say what I'm about to say, it doesn't matter, excuse me, it not doesn't matter, but it doesn't mean that I feel a certain way about someone doing it a different way. So I'm going to say I don't do any marketing, never have, never advertised, never marketed. I mean, I do have a website, sfgoldman.com. You could argue that's marketing, but... That's really the way that people can learn what I do. But I don't market at all. I don't. I never spent the time on advertising um, as far as for my actual practice. Um, it's all word of mouth based on results, straight up referrals. But with that said, if there's a chiropractor who's super into social media and marketing and all that stuff, I have no problem with it whatsoever. I think it's cool. And uh, I think it's great. You know, whatever, whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. But I've just... I've just always gone a word of mouth and have never advertised. So you mentioned social media. Do you have any favorite apps or social media sites how you stay engaged with your community at all? I don't, um, but I'll say a couple things. I have opened a school um, not too long ago. I opened the Zone School of Healing, 
to teach chiropractors around the world what I do, and you guys know what I do because I've been talking about it as far as like the zone technique and some of the principles of healing that I use, which I haven't really talked about in this show. But um, I have um, created an online school. And quite frankly, when I first made the online school, I was like, man, can I teach this online? But I can. I don't know what it is. It's really cool. So I have this school where, you know, you, if you decide to become a student, you sign up, you get immediate access to a membership site. The membership site has a bunch of videos I made explaining the zone technique and the principles of healing, how I do what I do, which so you can do it too. And then I also have a weekly Q&A um, webinar every Wednesday. So when you sign up for the school, you get unlimited access, lifetime access to all my instructional videos, and then you get six weeks live Q&A. If you're busy on Wednesday mornings when my live Q&A goes up, you can watch it later. You have access to it for six weeks. I think you actually have access to your six weeks for a lifetime. I'm not sure about that, but the, the uh, person who helps me with the uh, school, they know all those details. But anyway, um, so I created this online school, and right now we have about 100, 105 students all over the world, many European countries. People are. I, I created a Facebook group, a closed Facebook group just for my students. And you should see what people write. They're like, man, you know, I, I, after 22 years of practice, I was ready to hang it up. Now I can't wait to go to work. Or, you know, I heard chiropractic could create miracles, but I never really saw it. But now I get them every week. Um, I, so I've opened this really cool school. And we actually, um, we set this thing up for any of your uh, listeners who want to check the school out. We set up a special uh, link. It's called zonetechnique.com forward slash Cairo Hustle. So oh, that's zone- awesome. What's that? That's awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So it's zonetechnique.com. Again, zonetechnique.com forward slash Cairo Hustle. And if you go there, you learn about the school, got some free videos, how to, how to, how to sign up if you want to. And by the way, my school has a 100% money back guarantee. And I want to talk about that for a second. I would never want anyone to take my school, my class, and come out unsatisfied. Like, oh, that's not what I thought it was gonna be about. I didn't really like it. I thought it was a little different. Hey, man, I don't want your money then. You know what I'm saying? Or man or woman. That's very honorable. Yeah, so just so you know, if anyone doesn't like the school, we have a 100% money back guarantee, no questions asked. And if someone wants their money back, we give them their money back in full. We don't say like minus the credit card fees or you know that we have to pay because you pay with credit card. Or we don't say, you know, it takes us two weeks to refund your money. Or we don't ask you a bunch of questions. If anyone wants their money back, we give them a 100% refund, no questions asked immediately. So it's kind of like if people like what I'm saying today and they want to check my school out and they sign up for my school, it's kind of only one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to take the school and love it. It's going to change your practice and your life in an amazing way, or you're not going to like it and it's free. That's it. I have, I think, 105 students. I've given three refunds. And the people who got the refunds, I didn't ask any questions. So you want, hey, there's your money. Well, I think, Doc, that what I've found is most people that are willing to give refunds back on anything, uh, they know that they're delivering a positive system to people. And... You know, I think also that when people are willing to say, hey, I want my money back from anything, it's just because I think those people didn't give themselves enough time to learn the material, and they felt like I think it. <laughs> I think you're right, because it's funny. I'm, I'm laughing at myself when you said that. Our official refund policy is you have to watch all the instructional videos and do at least three of your six live Q&A webinars. But the first two refunds I gave, they didn't even take the course. They just signed up and wanted their money right back. And uh, I was like thinking, oh, I should tell them, you know, they actually have to watch. But I was like, ah, oh, screw it. I don't care. I just give them their money back. But the third person, uh, he actually did take the class. And he didn't, well, I don't know why, he didn't like it. So I gave his money back. So really, out of 105 students, we've had actually one legit refund. Yeah, I mean, I get that. You know, every every once in a while, you know, even when you're uh, studying under champions and winners, you uh, you don't know how to apply what you've learned, and sometimes other people's teaching techniques aren't for us. Totally, and actually, again, you know, to, to have 105 students and only one read fund, that means I have 105 thrilled people. So it's pretty, and you know, anyone who joins my school, they get immediate access to the closed uh, Facebook group, and you just you just interact with other people, and you see some amazing stuff so let me ask you this this might be a little bit of a, a deeper question is why only 105 
I just opened the school very recently. Oh wow! Okay, cool. I mean, I I, I hope it's on the way to thousands. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, really enthused about it. And the website for the school itself just is zonetechnique.com. Again, we have a special thing for the Cairo Hustle people. That's zonetechnique.com forward slash Cairo Hustle. And again, my website is SF, like San Francisco, sfgoldman.com. That's my website. So, oh, yeah, but I, didn't, I, I forgot to answer the question. I'm sorry. I didn't fully answer the question. You asked about social media. I kind of got diverted. Um, I do have a Instagram, but I just kind of play around with it. I, I you know, I, I put on some martial arts stuff, and I just play around with it. So I have an Instagram just for fun. I have I have so many famous martial artists who come to me and so many famous pro fighters. I'll just film videos with them and put it up on Instagram and stuff. So that's my Instagram. That's just for fun. And then we do have a... Yeah, it's really. I have a Twitter account. I never use it, but yeah, I'm, I'm not really. I'm not really into social media. But again, I have nothing against it. I think it's cool. So, what kind of books are you reading right now, or what kind of podcasts do you like keep um, up with regularly? Well, I, I'm from now on. I'm only going to keep up with Cairo Hustle podcast. <laughs> but, um, but, but, uh, but, um, as far as books, I'm a voracious reader. I'm always reading. Not because I think I have to. I just really enjoy it. Um, I usually read books about metaphysics or martial arts. That's usually what I read. I have some other ones. But, um, you know, so I'd say usually I'm wrapped up in a, a metaphysical book or a martial arts book. So I'll, I'll just throw one out there to you guys. Um, it's not so much one book, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw out an author, which most likely – None of your people are familiar with, so it might benefit some people. His name is Koichi Tohei. Koichi, K-O-I-C-H-I, Tohei, T-O-H-E-I. Koichi Tohei was an Aikido master. And um, it doesn't matter if you do Aikido or not. His books are not about Aikido techniques. Um, he was an Aikido master. He was the only 10th degree student, so he was the best student ever of the founder of Aikido, O Sensei. You know, different people in Aikido have different opinions about who was the best, but he was the only 10th degree ever given out by the founder and he kind of broke off from the general um aikido group and he formed what's called ki aikido where you're like concentrated more on ki which is the japanese word for energy and i really love his books so that's what comes to mind about you know specifically what i've been reading a lot recently any book by koichi tohei you can find you'd be doing yourself a favor they're spectacular well that pretty much wraps up our episode for the day. Is there anything okay. that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get a chance to ask you? Thank you for that. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me on today. I appreciate it. And thanks for asking me if I have anything else. Let's see. Well, I think the main things, you know, that I didn't really cover too much so far, and I've alluded to it a few times, are the principles of healing. And um, I'll just, I'll just kind of leave with this. Um, I hope I don't offend anyone with this. Not offend you guys, but you know, some chiropractors can get pretty crazy. Which is that, you know, most chiropractors think like, well, innate is just there. So if innate is there, there's really nothing to do except relieve the subluxations. Because if you relieve the subluxations, innate will take care of everything else, and you'll get healthy. Again, I'm not quoting every straight chiropractor exactly, but that's generally what chiropractors believe. If you relieve subluxations, innate will do the rest. Well. I don't quite look at it like that, and neither did Dr. Fleet. Um, I believe in contacting and directing a Nate and to um, be in the right communication with a Nate because if you give a Nate an order, it will carry it out for you. Um, you know, someone who reads about disease all day, they're giving a Nate an order of disease and a Nate will carry it out. But someone who um, vibrates on health is giving a Nate, a Nate an order of health, and that's what's going to manifest. And I'll just tell this one quick story. Sid Williams, who was the founder of my school, you know, and I, a guy that I have a lot of respect for. I never followed him much. I never was into DE, which he invented, dynamic essential seminars. I never did toggle, which he was really into. I was never an upper cervical doctor, which he was. So I was never really a disciple of Sid Williams, but I respect him quite a bit. And he wrote in one of his autobiographies that there was a time when he first opened Life College, the one I went to in Atlanta, Atlanta area, when he was having a lot of problems and he just, his body broke down and he had this period, I think it was a two year period, I think, where he was non-functional. He couldn't even leave the house. In fact, he said that his wife, Nell, who was also a great chiropractor, another upper cervical doctor, 
she would just take him out for a ride in the car every night for 45 minutes just so he can get out of the house. But, the, you know, eventually he recovered. Here's my point. His wife is a great upper cervical doctor. She was adjusting him, I'm sure, every day. This guy was subluxation free. He had a phenomenal upper cervical doctor adjusting his atlas and axis um, daily, I'm pretty sure. So here's the guy, completely subluxation free, yet he couldn't even function. Well, if a Nate can do everything just when you're subluxation free, he shouldn't have been non-functional. But nonetheless, he was. So you have to start asking yourself, why is it that some people get adjusted, but they don't get better? And um, if you understand about contacting and directing an eight, which I will teach you very clearly in my seminars and my online class, then you'll get the answer to some of that stuff. So that's the one thing I didn't get to bring up. So I'm glad you asked me if I had anything else because it would be that. Well, you stirred up uh, another question for me, if that's okay. Sure. So where do you go for your CEs and what, what seminars do you enjoy going to to learn from? It's a great, great question. I mean, CE, let's, you know, we got to, we got to talk like it is. CE, you just have to get it over with. So when I, when I go for my CEs, I just look at what looks like it'll be the most painless, you know, day. And I just sign up and, you know, hopefully, hopefully it's as painless as possible. Um, I used to love going to Lenny Coco seminars for any of you, any of in your audience who know Lenny Coco. Lenny Coco is a great chiropractor. He was in California. He used to have great CE seminars. I used to really love them. I used to go all the time. But he retired. He moved to Hawaii. So we're still good friends. He's my buddy. And whenever I go to Hawaii, I hang out with him. But uh, he's not around anymore for me to get my CE. So I just get, I just take what I can get. As far as seminars, um, there's a lot of seminars on Dr. Fleet's work that I took. Um, I took, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours and weekend and weekend and weekend of those seminars um, starting in the early 90s when I was at school. And I've taught several of those seminars too. Um, and uh, when I was a student, I'd say from pre reqs my two quarters of pre reqs right through fourth quarter, I didn't want to be too tunnel visioned on just doing the Dr. Fleet stuff. So I really explored and I went to the Motion Palpation Club and the God State Club and the CBP Club. And I even one semester, we had a pretty prominent upper cervical doctor at my school and I had him just adjust me for the whole semester, the quarter, I mean, and I didn't have any, I didn't let anyone else adjust me. So I did upper cervical, I tried network. I really, really explored chiropractic techniques and philosophies very, 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 very thoroughly, especially those first two quarters of pre-reqs right the fourth quarter. But by fourth quarter, I'm like, nothing touches Dr. Fleet stuff, nothing touches the zones that I've seen, and I went full-fledged with that fourth quarter on. Um, so, yeah, I don't really go to any other seminars these days, but you know, I have my hands full with teaching, my teaching my online school. No, that's really cool. I appreciate you sharing. And, you know, you come from a different angle of the profession than I've heard before, to be honest. You know, mostly when I ask people that question, I'm like, yeah, I love Cal Jam. I go to Mile High. I like Cairofest. I go to Berkshires. I, I go to The Wave. I go to... I, I, I never even heard of anything you just mentioned. That blows me away. That really blows me away, man. That just tells me how far removed some people out there that are doing what's right for themselves are from what everybody else is doing. And again, I'll reiterate, I'll reiterate, um, you know, I'm very outside of my students, you know, uh, like I said, 105 now on the way to thousands, hopefully outside of my students and, you know, some of my friends who are chiropractors, I'm pretty removed from the chiropractic profession in general, but it doesn't mean I don't respect it. And all those things that you mentioned and all these enthused chiropractors helping a ton of people have my, have my utmost respect. And that's sincerely, and you know, the kind of show that you guys have, you have my sincere utmost respect. And um, again, just because someone doesn't do it the way I do it or see it the way I see it, you know, if you're helping people, you know, I tip my hat to them. Well, you know, I, 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 I'm really excited for your future. I, I'm really excited for what can happen when you start tapping into a little bit of social media. And when you uh, have people hear this and they reach out to you and they're like, wow, this guy's an untapped market. How can I collaborate with him? And how can I get him and what he's doing to influence chiropractic even more? Hey, I would love all that. And again, the ways to get in touch with me, obviously I mentioned um, zonetechnique.com forward slash Cairo Hustle. That's obviously a way to connect. You can go to my website, sfgoldman.com. Um, it has a contact button. You can send me a, you know, contact. There's a contact form. I mean, you can send me a email, and um, I'm more than happy to, uh, you know, assist the chiropractic profession in any way I can. I'd love to actually. 
Well, Peter, I just want to first-handedly thank you again for being our guest today. This this was a lot of fun. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. And uh, everyone, go over to zonetechnique.com slash Cairo Hustle and get your exclusive Cairo Hustle offer. All right, well, that just about wraps us up. All right, guys. I really appreciate it, and... um... Hopefully we'll talk again soon. Yeah, Dr. Pete, next time we're in San Francisco, we'll look you up and come out and get an adjustment. I would love to. You guys both get a free adjustment. You got it. (laughs) All right. Can't wait. (laughs) Thank you. All right, guys. Have a good day. Yep. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.